Hi, and welcome to Tuesday Talks. My name is Shawanda, and today we are continuing our conversation about toxic relationships and situations. Well, we have been talking um, about how to identify toxic relationships and understanding is it me or is it them, and today we're gonna talk a little bit about understanding how toxic relationships and situations hurt everyone involved. Normally we pay attention to the victim, and that is a person that it's the most obvious one that these situations are impacting. But we don't normally pay attention to the perpetrator and how that person is actually being impacted by these relationships and situations. Well, it may surprise you that when it comes to toxic situations, these hurt everyone involved, whether they know it or not. Let's look at some of the obvious things. When we're talking about um, the relationships and situations, like I said, we know that toxic situations hurt victims, right? That is the most obvious because we talk about it, um, we identify that first and foremost. They are the ones subjected to the unrest and negativity and are the most vulnerable and likely to suffer. And they're suffering, whether it's in the home, at work or school and in the workplace. And so those are some of the most common places um, as well as, I'm sorry, as well as uh, friendships, right? So those are some of the most common places that we're kind of dealing with. Now, how are they being impacted um, or hurt in these situations? One, when we're looking at at home, uh, we're looking at family members who live with toxic people. Um, They tend to suffer from things like depression and anxiety and apathy. and weight gain and it could be so many more other um, health issues that they're dealing with. They can have physical um, health issues or mental and emotional health issues as a result of all the negativity and the bullying that they're living with on a day-to-day basis. And because they're dealing with all of this, it doesn't just stay in the home, it actually spills over into other aspects of their life, whether it's at work and or school um, and also into friendships. So whatever is happening at home, it's important to understand that it's happening in other aspects of their life because again, you're also dealing with how it's um, impacting them mentally, emotionally, um, even spiritually and physically. Now, if it's doing that or when it's doing that, how does that impact your performance in all the other spaces and places that you need to navigate in your life or in their life? Well, one, when you go to work, if you're an employee, Um, then this is impacting how you are performing at work. You will have a lower level of productivity if you are impacted by such levels of, um, well, if you are impacted by levels of toxic relationships or situations um, because you're constantly coexisting with these toxic people, um, you're also having um, higher levels of absenteeism. So remember we talked about all the health issues that you're having. Well, if you're experiencing all these health issues, um, even physical health issues, then how can you actually show up in your best self? You're actually less healthy, um, even physically, right? And emotionally, mentally. So a lot of times it will call off work. Um, or even as a child or someone who's in school, you can't focus, you can't perform, and so you miss days out of school. So these are individuals who have high rates of absenteeism um, because of those toxic situations and relationships. Now, businesses, they also have high rates of turnover and overall morale is generally lower because of productivity. So when you, it's a toxic situation and victims are impacted by this, then the businesses have um, high levels of turnover because the victims can't deal with the situation. So therefore the businesses suffer um, and also clientele will suffer because of the low levels of productivity. Now, again, um, the other place we're looking at is friendships. Friends who continue um, toxic relationships, they kind of bring their anxieties home. So remember, one place impacts another place, right? It's really just kind of this vicious cycle because it's really happening in every aspect of your life. When you are um, um, unaware um, or unable to understand the impact of toxic friendships, 
um, and and what it's what it's doing to your life, you tend to carry it, like I said, place to place, and you're you're harboring all these feelings, you're harboring all these emotions, and therefore, when someone says something uh, or, or or does something, you tend to have outbursts that are like very very unexpected, right? So you get angry, you have these angry outbursts, or you have these un- uncontrolled emotions that kind of leak out when they shouldn't be, um, and when you should be having like enjoyable moments, enjoyable time with your friends, enjoyable time with your family. Um, But that's because you've been around other toxic people in situations all the time. In all of these situations, um, or yeah, in all of these situations, um, being subjected to toxic people or, you know, toxic cultures, it basically causes a a multitude of problems from mental to physical, emotional, uh, spiritual um, issues that basically like to kind of take a toll on like your livelihood and your general like overall well-being. And that's really the point that we're trying to make here. For victims, it impacts every aspect of your life, your community, your social, your social life, your your physical life, your mental health, um, all of it. And it's really important to kind of understand this so that you can kind of get a, a better grasp of what's happening in your life. Now, that's the victim. Those are the most obvious things. But like I said, we don't always pay attention to what's happening with the actual perpetrator. Now, while most people would agree that toxicity does hurt those subjected to this poison, um, they don't always see um, what's happening to the perpetrator. And it's very, very difficult for us to normally see how things are hurting um, someone who actually causes hurt. But the truth of the matter is, is that hurt people are hurting people. And so we really want to be uh, very cognizant of that, is that they're not mean and malicious people who are causing these um, situations. It's just that they are hurt people who hurt people. Okay. As we get, as we, you know, start understanding that um, and connecting to that, then we can start understanding how these situations are actually hurting them as well and how they're hurting themselves. Because when toxic people um, are doing things and when we have these toxic situations and we don't do anything to kind of stop it or to acknowledge it, right, Um or basically hold the people accountable for their actions, that means that every party that's involved actually becomes a contributor to the problem. So we have a toxic person that's in our life and then we don't hold them accountable for their level of toxicity, then we're actually contributors to the problem. And that means there is no longer, or basically, you know, there's a fine line between villain and victim there because we're allowing it to happen. Now, this doesn't mean that you go and you try to fix everybody's problem because we talked about that before. It really just means that you start doing the steps that you need to to either remove yourself from it, you know, basically taking care of yourself um, or, you know, holding, you know, holding them to um, expectations because you can't really control what they do, but you can control what you do and how you respond to situations. Now, we pointed out how victims are um, impacted um, by uh, by toxic people in situations, but let's look at um, the not so obvious ways of how perpetrators are impacted. Because again, we understand that, you know, they're the ones that's at the root of the problem. They're kind of dishing out the toxicity. Um, but again, they are being negatively impacted by their own behaviors and some of the same scenarios, whether it's work, home and or school, as well as in friendships. So when we're looking at at home, people who bully uh, play the victim and demand unreasonable amounts of attention and creating um, these dysfunctional dynamics. Um, This is what they fear the most. This is what they fear the most. Um, They are creating the dynamics that they actually fear the most. That's what they're doing. Um, Generally, people who operate in dysfunction, um, they're coming out of a place. It's coming out of a place of fear. Um, They often bring the things they fear most into their lives. And these things are distrust, alienation, and abandonment. So think about it this way. If you have people who are um, constantly uh, playing the victim, they they probably fear abandonment. And so therefore, they're trying to bring you into their space and making sure that you um, don't abandon them. Um, Those who need unreasonable amounts of attention, um, 
you know, they, they again, have abandonment issues. Um, those who um, bully, they um, have trust issues. And so to kind of, you know, keep people at bay, they kind of, <laughs> they, they hurt people. So, you know, it's really, everything is really more of a defense mechanism um, rather than getting the right tools or the proper tools to kind of deal with the issues that they have. So, but the challenge is, is that, they're actually pushing more people away, which is actually causing more harm. So this is why we say they're actually inviting the things that they don't want into their life and they don't even realize it. So when we're talking about work, um, when, when we're dealing with management all the way down to the lowest level of employee, right? Um, everyone plays a part or everyone can be uh, a toxic person. From management, um, toxic employees, they basically can like, drive away good people. And it's really important to understand that. So from a management standpoint, we have to deal with the toxic employees. And it's very easy to turn a blind eye to our toxic employees. Sometimes we turn a blind eye because we think that person is our superstar. That person is killing it. They're 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 our, you know, our, our team player. They're the ones that's giving the, the the high level of productivity. But here's the thing. One person is not carrying your company. One person is not doing all of the work. So if you are leaning on one person, you are contributing to their toxic behavior. And so you you have to think about how you are um, now not giving the attention to all the other employees. You also have to look at how all the other employees are being impacted by how much attention you're giving to your quote unquote superstar. So that's something to think about. Um, because if that continues to happen, you're going to have a high rate of turnover and you're going to also have really low productivity and you probably already have low productivity. You're just not paying attention to it because you're just focused on this one person and how much that one person is producing, but you're not looking at how all the other areas are actually suffering. So that's something to think about. Now let's look at, um, one other area in that. When you're looking at this quote unquote superstar, you know, employee per se, that person is the one that can actually bring in lawsuits. And also, um, uh, like I said, we, we talked about affecting other people, but you can also wind up having a lot of disgruntled uh, customers because you're so focused on this person that needs all this attention, but all this other work that's not getting done. Um, how is that impacting your customers? How is that Im- impacting, you know, the, the, the bottom line of everything? So let's look at that and see what other challenges you're having kind of in your company. Uh, And then also friendships, Uh, toxic friends who do not face their demons can find themselves at risk of being abandoned or at the very least subject to gossip and fodder. This is important to understand because, again, we talk about how those who are toxic actually invite into their space the very thing they're trying to avoid. So for someone who has such a low self-esteem or low self-worth who likes to put down other people, um, but yet, and then, you know, have a a really high engagement for themselves, it does actually happen that people do wind up talking more about them and gossiping and, you know, creating fodder um, about them, which actually does bring their self-esteem and self-worth even lower. So that is very, very challenging. Um, So, you know, they're not accepting that, uh, they're, they're very unaware of what's happening and they're not accepting their responsibility for their destructive behavior, which can actually lead to um, very dangerous self-harm um, and also uh, harm to others. And when we're looking at you know that mental health um, impact, when you're dealing with a decline of self-worth and self-impact, think about um, the levels of depression that that person continues to deal with and, and how it can, how that level of depression can overall impact their life, right? So that's why that's, that's important to understand. If we understand how um, toxic situations and people can actually impact um, the victim as well as the perpetrator, then the question remains, why do people remain in these situations? Well, quite frankly, people oftentimes are in authority and they resist being called out on the behavior. That's one reason. And when you're dealing with, you know, someone who is the victim and someone who's a perpetrator, well, the risk 
you know, talking about the risk worth and, and the reward as far as getting out of situations and also changing behaviors. And the risk worth the reward to the victim and the price of change is, isn't low enough to the perpetrator. So, um, you know, for the victim, it's just, it's not worth it. The reward isn't worth it. And for the perpetrator, the change, it's like low reward for them as well. And so they're like, eh, it's not, it's not really worth me doing anything. For the victim, it's like, eh, it's not really worth me doing anything. The reward is so low. So for both, they just kind of stay in this vicious cycle or they think that it's very low. Um, it really has a lot to do with self-worth, self-esteem, and your values and you know, self-value. The best thing that everyone can do when it comes to um, is requiring, when it comes to these situations, is to require the perpetrator to be held accountable and the victims require um, standards for their health above all else in all situations and at all costs. We have to hold perpetrators accountable. And as a victim, you have to look at your health, mental, physical, um, emotional health, your, your overall well-being, right? So that will kind of help in, in all these situations. When we're looking at toxic situations, remember that they actually hurt everyone involved and they have to be managed for the health and welfare of the group as a whole. If you um, have been in or you are in a toxic situation or relationship and these messages have been helpful to you so far and you're like, man, I'm not sure. I think, I, I think I've been in a, a situation, but I don't know. I can't, I can't tell if it's me. I can't tell if it's them. Um, some of these things seem familiar to me, but I, I don't know. Maybe I want to, maybe I kind of want to talk to someone a little bit. Well, I'm here and we can talk about it and we can also create an exit strategy for you to kind of help you um, move out of these toxic situations. Um, you can actually reach out to me at hello at shawandarandolph.com or you can go on my website at shawandarandolph.com and we can work through, we can, you know, you can schedule a discovery call with me and we can go from there to kind of talk about your situation and see if we should work together um, to kind of help you through your situation and also help you on the road to recovery um, if you have been in a situation. So I thank you for joining me today on my Tuesday talk as we continue our conversation on toxic situations and relationships. And today we definitely talked about how these situations and relationships are impacting everyone, including the perpetrator, who we don't normally think about as a victim in their own story. So. I look forward to talking with you soon and thank you again for joining me. Bye for now.